hey GED students, it's GED question of the daytime. And um, <laughs> this uh, question's ironic again, because I told you that we were playing two truths and a lie. And even in the directions, I say one of the statements below is a lie. But the entire internet, well, at least the three people who look at my posts, um, are saying that I've got more lies than that here. Um, so let's go ahead and analyze the statements below these equations to see if they are true or false. So I actually uh, would like to start, I don't know, where shall we start? Goodness, let's start with C. A lot of students know how to deal with the square root of 16, when it's just a check mark, they know that that means what number squared equals 16 or what number times itself equals 16. So most students are pretty good with the square root of 16 knowing it's 4. Again, if these kinds of problems were to show up on the GED, they would very likely come up where, when you don't have a calculator. Uh, so knowing that uh, 4 squared or 4 times itself 4 squared or 4 times itself equals 16 allows you to do the inverse of that to take the square root of 16 and get back to 4. Okay, that being said, watch out though. C doesn't say the square root of 16. C says the cube root of 16. You might say, well, Kate, what's the difference? Looks the same. I see the little check mark house. Well, what does a cube root mean? A cube root means uh, what number cubed? equals 16. It's the inverse of cubing. Cube root, when you have that little three index in the check mark house, in the radical as it's known, um, means the opposite of cubing. So I'm really asking myself what number times itself three times equals 16. Let's just take a look at this number four, which is a common answer that student gives me, uh, that students give me, and check my work by working backwards. I could work backwards by cubing four to see if it really does give me 16. Now what does it mean to cube? It means to multiply four by itself three times. Now of course four times four is 16, but that's only two fours. I gotta keep multiplying. If I multiplied 16 by four again, I'd get 64. So this is nonsense. The cubed root of 16 isn't 4. In fact, the cube root of 64 is equal to 4, not 16 at all. Uh, 16 is much too small. So C is a lie. Now that was the one that most students are sh were sure was true. That is a lie. So let's go t check out our other, other statements here. So as it turns out, mathematicians, even when something isn't a perfect square, so what do I mean by perfect square? Like, for example, 25 is a perfect square. It's a perfect square of the number 5. 5 times 5 is 25. If you squared 5, you'd have 25. Um, so a perfect square is really easy to simplify. You know, the square root of 25 is 5. Um, because that is what 25 is made of. It's made of 5 squared. That being said, though, you know, how can you do it when you don't have a perfect square like 75? Well, turns out you can use what's known as a factor tree to find perfect squares within 75. Even though 75 isn't a perfect square, it might have a factor that is a perfect square. And indeed it does. You know, 75 is the same as 3 quarters, 3 25s. And so 3 times 25 is the same as 75. Now, even though 75 wasn't a perfect square, 25 is. It's the perfect square of 5 times 5. And so what I can do here is I can pull out the number 5. 5 was, you know, a perfect square or is the square root of the perfect square 25. So I can pull 5 out. I can square root that. Now, it comes out of the radical because I took the square root of 25, so the way I joke about it is the two repeated factors become one. This three, however, was all alone. He is not a part of a perfect square because he doesn't have a matching three factor, and so that three has to stay in uh, the radical there. It cannot be square rooted, not without getting an ugly decimal. And so uh, the square root of 75 simplifies to 5 squared of 3. And this is why the internet was teasing me or laughing at me, uh, because I actually had two lies. So they're like, hey, you got three lies. You said one of the statement below is a lie, and then that was a lie. And anyway, but y'all, there was a lie too. So let's check the other two. Are they right, or do I just lie all the time? Let's take a look. So the square root of 27. 
Once again, 27 is not a perfect square, but let's do a factor tree of it to see if it has any perfect squares within it. 27 is the same as 3 times 9. 3 times 9, and 9 is a perfect square, a perfect square of 3 times 3. So I can take the square root of that 9. The, the two 3's will pull out to be a single 3. Uh, as I square root them, the two will become one, and then that one remaining end of a branch, that three that doesn't have a partner, will remain inside. And so the square root of 27 really is a three square root of three. I'm going to cross that off. That's not a lie. Take a look at the cube root of eight. Now you might be saying, well, Kate, uh, what is the cube root of eight? You know, again, if I say the cube root of eight is what? I'm really asking myself what number cubed equals 8. Now their guess is 2, so we can just check their guess instead of doing the work ourselves by cubing 2. Let's see what happens if we cube 2. Does it really give us 8? Well, 2 cubed means the same as 2 times 2 times 2. 2 times 2 is 4, and if I multiply that by 2 again, look at that, I do get 8. That was a true statement. That was not one of the lies. So as it turns out, the lies here were both A and C and apparently me as I wrote the directions. If you have any questions about this or any other GED math topic, feel free to drop it in the comments and I'll do my best to answer it.